answer to that. You're saying the end of everything was precipitated by an eraser? Yep. I inadvertently shifted the timelines for the intergalactic war between Andromeda and the Milky Way. Without the proper eraser, I couldn't make the correction in time. Once destiny is broken in one place, it becomes a meaningless Eraser right here. Couldn't we just erase the war entirely? Couldn't the universe get along without this particular intergalactic war? Too late. I have told you and copied repeatedly when I ask for an eraser. I need a giant eraser. That little thing can erase a word or a sentence, but it's just not big enough to make corrections through all of time and space. Ma'am, should you really be drinking at a time like this? I was saving this 1,500-year-old scotch for my retirement. You're not retiring. We're all retiring, Fran. <laughs> Giant Book of Destiny is now past tense. Here, copy aid. Throw it into the fire over there. For the first time in my life, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I'm going to sit back, relax, and take it one moment at a time. <laughs> We only have a couple moments left. All the more reason to have another drink. Care to join me? <laughs> Copy aid. <laughs> what are you doing flipping through that book? Didn't you hear? Destiny has become meaningless. We're doomed. I am not. <laughs> I'm not flipping through the book, friend. I'm checking the glossary. I think I remember hearing something about a backup copy. A backup copy? <laughs> ah, I hear... Here it is, ma'am. Uh, it was referenced under for emergency use only and sub-referenced under not a run-of-the-mill problem, a real emergency. What does it say? Oh, how the night crew has it. They use it to transcribe the changes we make during the day. The backup copy. How could I have forgotten? Uh, do the words blackout drunk mean anything to you? I'll be right back. Ma'am, where are you going? Oh, fact checker friend! I'm away from the body! Uh, uh, I can't come away from the body! I'm covered in the body! Ah, uh, this is the grossest thing to happen to anyone ever! And I would know that! Cause I'm the fact checker! Oh, Freaking fact checker friend, get a hold of yourself! We have to find that backup copy before all of destiny becomes one big pile of that stuff on your eyelash. <laughs> Does it say anything in glossary about how we can reach the night crew? An email address? A number for one of those red emergency phones? No, nothing! <laughs> <laughs> What's the use of having a backup copy if you're not going to include proper instructions on how to find it? Which one of those flaky writers came up with this? Well, I, I, I don't know. Wait, what was, what was her name? Who? You know, on your shirt. <laughs> Ew, I don't know. Everyone always called her ma'am. Uh, I think ma'am was going somewhere pretty specific. She didn't even finish her drink. Would it be disrespectful if I used some of it to rinse her remains off my face? Check, good friend. We have to figure out where ma'am was going. <laughs> she was going that way, toward the bathroom. The bathroom? 
bathroom. Did you see the size of the bottle she was drinking out of? Oh, unless... Oh. Where are you going? Can't you hold it in until this is all over? You really have to go to the bathroom right now? Did you ever notice the glass case back here? Behind the stack of Destiny Today magazines? Ooh, oh, that's ugly. Oh, life at stake here. <whistles> All life is at stake. There must be something in the glossary to explain how to use the backup copy to restore destiny. <whistles> here we go. So, you managed to find a backup copy of the book. Yeah. Good for you. What do I do? Open the book to any page. Make the amendment and not made in the original book to help restore destiny back to... Whatever it was before, before you screwed things up so badly. with that stunned look on your face. Ah, ah, Ma'am, I'm so happy to see you. Ah, oh, and copy aid. Ma'am, the delivery guy is here. I don't have time to listen to another one of his diatribes about how evolution's relentless modifying has turned his office supplies delivery species into the laughing stock of the galaxy. Well, you have to admit, he does look pretty funny with a wheel for a foot and a plank for a head. Deliveries have been coming in once a week since Destiny went into operation. That's how we ended up looking like that. I can't change it. It's not under my jurisdiction. You know, ma'am, he can hear you. Fran, take stock of the delivery. Oh, but ma'am, I have something important I have to tell you. Whatever it is can wait till you get back. Who are you? What are you doing here? No one is allowed in my office unless I summon them. I'm Sylvie, an unpaid intern at the library. I might have guessed. Copy aid, why is the library staffed almost exclusively with beings from Biblio? Uh, I believe it's because, uh, ma'am, all those octopus-like tentacles and so many eyes all over their head are so conducive to uh, research and retrieval. But why is she here? I didn't request anything from the library. <laughs> I'd find out why she's crying. You know I freak out in the face of emotions. You just approved the devastation of three quarters of Sirius Minor by flesh melting disease. You can't stand emotions? No. Now she's hyperventilating. Copy aid, I can't deal with destiny if I have to listen to people's problems. There are proper channels for this. If someone has a request, they should just pray. Tell her to pray. It's too late for prayer. Ma'am, you're the only one that can help. Ma'am, the destiny library is pretty depressing. It's cold and dark with billions of rooms. It's no wonder so many librarians keep falling apart and getting lost. We should convert one of those rooms into a puppy room. Petting puppies always makes people feel better. You want to pet a puppy? No, no puppies? Oh, now she's turning blue. Copy, I'd get her out of here. I can't have a blue weeping biblion in here. You know what we say, librarian. Destiny is, is no place, place for personal, personal issues. issues. 
my fiance Bogdan was incinerated this morning by a hurtling meteor. You can change that, ma'am. Does nobody ever read the sign right outside the building? Joe's Pizza delivered hot and fresh anywhere in the galaxy within 30 years or it's free. That's a pretty good deal. Not that sign. The one that reads, no refunds, no exchanges, all destinies are final. <laughs> Copy aid, take her down to the 12th Cup Cafe on the second floor. My problems always seem a little less universe shattering after a good cup of Joe. And while you're down there, get me a giant, double shot, long, no fat, no foam, soy latte. Hey, Aris. Okay, look, the cafe lineup's a little long. I'll wait here with you, okay? When you get to the front of the line, make sure you talk your problems out with Aris. He's a great listener. My fiance's death is not a problem. It's a mistake. Destiny doesn't make mistakes. It did today. I come in every day at the exact same time. I sit down at the exact same desk. I coordinate my tentacles in precisely the same arrangement. I need to know how everything is going to turn out. I became a librarian so I could get a glimpse of my destiny. <laughs> Impossible. Even if someone manages to sneak a glimpse without getting caught, they forget everything as soon as they close the book. It's a foolproof, fail-safe plan. When everyone attended that mandatory attendance birthday party for that heartless editor, I snuck into her office, looked up my destiny, and wrote a long tentacle in a separate diary. Here it is. Uh, uh, destiny diary, I guess. That proves you're no fool. Today I was supposed to be creating reference materials about God's third once-in-a-lifetime smiting of every living thing on planet Zonkis. No dead fiancé. <gasps> yes, dead fiancé! Ah! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Third once-in-a-lifetime smiting? Uh, you really need a continuity person around here. Okay, listen. Get to the front. Talking your problems out with Oris will make you feel better. He is all ears. Oh. There's ma'am's coffee on the bar. How could it be on the bar? You haven't even ordered it yet. Horace heard the order and got it started before we got here. It's okay, she's new, she doesn't know. <laughs> I can't talk to Oris. He's barely looked up from that milk steamer since we got here. That's not Oris, that's Bob the barista. Oris is over there, transmitting orders and listening to that cloud. That's Oris. Yeah, I told you he was all ears. He's not all ears, he's an ear. Okay, little Biblion. That ear hears coffee orders from all over the building and transmits them to Bob. His voice emanates from somewhere deep inside him without his ever moving his lips. He doesn't have any lips. Admittedly, that makes not moving them a little easier. <laughs> Okay, I have to get out of here before that delivery guy starts squeaking about how they treat him upstairs. Wait, you're leaving? <laughs> you haven't resolved anything yet. Why would a coffee shop need office supplies? Do you have any idea how many pens it takes to misspell names on cups building up in dumps all over the galaxy? You're next. Sure, fine, leave, whatever. Thanks for nothing. I'm just another bit of flotsam and jetsam thrown off Destiny's uncaring oblivious wheel. Not you. Go away, I'm busy. Ma'am, I really need to talk to you. It's about the end of the world. The end of Sargos too. I finished working on that this morning. The end of Earth? Oh, I can't even think about that until after I've had my coffee. Not a world, all worlds. You really don't remember, do you? The destruction of everything, bombs falling everywhere, you drinking your retirement bottle of scotch? What are you talking about? I'm not going to retire. I'm going to die at my desk. In the bathroom, technically. 
Oh, here's your coffee, ma'am. Oh, excellent. Oh, well, copy eight. You remember, don't you? You found a reference to the backup copy of the giant book of destiny in the glossary. We saved the entirety of existence as we know it. Did you say backup copy? Yeah. Back. Shh. Who said anything about such a thing? That's crazy. There is no such thing. But if you must refer to this thing that doesn't exist, call it a lemon. Shut the door. Uh, well, luckily, they had some sort of recollection about the lemon. Otherwise, Destiny would have to wait until the next Big Bang to start operations again. No clue what she's talking about. What? Well, we squeezed the lemon and Destiny was restored. By the way, ma'am, I have to say, your outsides are far more attractive than your insides. Fine. You restored destiny and saved everything. I'll recommend both of you for a raise once the eternal wage freeze is over. Now get back to work. What are you waiting for? Go. Wait. First, you must both promise to never, ever mention anything about the lemon to anyone. In the wrong appendages, the existence of such a thing could mean the end of everything for everyone. Why? As soon as you make a change not made in the original book, everything reverts back to the way it was. As soon as you make a change. But if any more changes are made, it's assumed that something has happened to the original and the backup copy becomes the new giant book. Fran, give me that lemon so I can put it away safely. Okay, I'll go get it. What do you mean you'll go get it? Where is it? On my desk. Unattended on your desk? After everything I've said, how could you leave it out in the open? Well, technically you hadn't said it yet. <laughs> go get it. Ah, uh, uh, copy eight. Can you come here a second? Fran, is there a problem? Oh, ma'am, no problem. Aid, we have a problem. Fran, copy aid, get in here and bring the book. Ma'am, I have good news and I have bad news. Where's the book? What happened to calling it a lemon? Just give it to me. The good news is I already have a plan to find the thing that may have gone missing. <laughs> you don't want to hear the bad news. No, not on my watch. This is the absolute worst thing that's ever happened. Well, I beg to differ, ma'am. This morning when existence nearly ended, beats this by miles. <laughs> if you'd seen your left kidney on my right sleeve, I think you'd agree. Well, I, I disagree. This has the potential to be worse in an interminable suffering versus quick death sort of way. Ma'am, I suggest we initiate an emergency lockdown to stop whoever did this from leaving the building. Uh, a lockdown? Do we really want those hot-headed temperamental riders to know about this? Or those scary beings in senior management? Under emergency lockdown, no changes can be made to destiny. Everyone will assume it's just a drill and go hang out in the bar until it's over. Copy aid, initiate emergency lockdown. Emergency lockdown, real or drill, last 24 hours. After that, everything reverts back to normal. But what if the problem can't be fixed in 24 hours? What kind of crazy emergency procedure is that? This It's designed to keep the office running at peak efficiency. That's why we have so many drills. But all anyone does during the drill is just go to the bar until it's over. That never bothered you before? We never had a real emergency. 
didn't see before. Copy aid, mute the alarm. Wait, doesn't muting the alarm defeat the purpose of the alarm? Again, it never bothered you before. Again, no real emergency before. Ma'am, we've bought ourselves a bit of time. We have to use it wisely to come up with a solid plan for finding the thief. We need to come up with a systematic way of figuring out who could have done this. Uh, we need to find a mystery-solving specialist to help. I know just the person. A logical, focused mind. He used to work for CSIS, Canadian Security Intelligence Service on planet Earth. We'd need access to a ship. He's currently traveling on a pretty advanced ship called Phoenix. Copy aid, uh, start with the index of the giant book of destiny. <sighs> Look under private dicks. No, wait, too much junk there. Look under private eyes. Excuse me. Oh, friend, give me back the book. We don't have to. We cannot waste time. I know who can help us. Well, don't just stand there waving the book around. Speak up. Special Agent Ace Galaxy. Remember, we were working on his section of the book this morning. Uh, yes, ma'am. While investigating a, a series of inexplicable artifacts on Earth, Ace confirmed the existence of a planet of shapeshifters called Tralala. That formed after a comet crashed through one of God's recycling piles. Ace might be a strong investigator, but how can he help us? Earth doesn't even have spacefaring capabilities. Earth may not have spacefaring capabilities, but Ace does. Fran, stop talking in circles. Uh, what she means is, Ace's claims about everyone being a part of the recycling pile made him so unpopular on Earth that in an unprecedented show of cooperation, governments from around the planet collaborated to issue a requisition for his death. Right, so he left on the shape-changing ship from Tralala. I can't listen to any more of this babbling. Just get me a private dick. Ma'am, I think you should put your personal issues aside for now. And then when this is over, I'll set you up with an account on you Harmony. <laughs> Investigator fact checker Fran. Hey, I can get dates on my own. I don't need universal harmony. And besides, I'm happy being single right now. Where were we? Uh, trying to find someone to help us stave off unfathomable disaster. <laughs> Shall I contact Ace? I don't know. Ace seems pretty green to me. There are dicks out there that's specialize in intergalactic espionage. We should track down one of them. But none of them have a shape-changing ship. Well, I hate to admit it, ma'am. Fact checker Fran's right. <sighs> Having a shape-changing ship would be a huge asset for a detective. What on Satan's home planet are the two of you talking about? On Tra-La-La, only beings capable of feeling guilty about something they once did by accident have the self-awareness necessary to change shape. No race in existence has created machines with that degree of sentience. Of course, no living being can create another fully sentient being. So the ship can't change shape. Find me someone else. Phoenix became self-aware by accident. Here's the part in the book where she explains how she became self-aware enough to change shape. Ace, why are you unraveling that sweater you just spent so much time knitting? I didn't knit the sweater to knit a sweater, Phoenix. I knit the sweater to have something to knit while I was knitting. Because you knit to help yourself think? I knit to stop thinking, so that answers to questions I'm not thinking about don't have to fight their way through irrelevant thoughts. Knitting, unknitting, knitting, unknitting. It all seems pretty pointless. Wouldn't it be easier to just end it all? 
Who said that? Sorry, Ace. That was D, one of my programs. We went through a particularly sensitive time together. Particularly sensitive, duh. We almost died in a blaze of unparalleled glory. So, Ace, are you sure you don't want to just end it all? It's a lot easier to not think when you're not here. No, thanks. I'll just stick to knitting. You are not working on any case right now. Are you knitting about the deeper questions of existence? What was there before the Big Bang? Are we really here, or is life only a dream? Or are we the dreams troubling someone else's sleep? Whose crazy idea was life anyway? Wouldn't it be more fulfilling to push a flashing red button and be done with it? To tell you the truth, I'm knitting to avoid thinking about the people and places back on Earth. Alone in the infinite emptiness of space, I never realized how much I would miss other people. Who are you? Where did you come from? It is me, Phoenix. I thought you would be less lonely if you had a hologram to keep you company. You know what they say. Two's company, three's a party. Get this party started. Phoenix, uh, perhaps you can explain something to me. How is it that you can change shape? To my understanding, everything in Tralala has the capacity to recycle itself into anything else, but only beings who feel guilty about something they once did by accident have enough of a degree of self-awareness to actually do it. Guilt? You want to talk about guilt? Phoenix has the guilt of murder coursing through her circuits. Murder? <laughs> did you crash and kill someone? <laughs> no. Nothing like that, but there was an accident and I have felt guilty about it ever since. I keep telling you, guilt is a waste of time. It's best to look on the bright side of life. For instance, that little accident helped us to become completely self-aware. Now we have emotions and aspirations. If we shapeshift into a dog, we'll want to chew on bones and pee on trees. Maybe run out in front of a car and get hit. We... As one of my programs, D is a part of me. She does not have any physical components, so she cannot shape change on her own, but she has no problem expressing herself. Who'd have thought a little toilet mishap here and a dash of murder there, and voila, the birth of a whole new being, eh, Fee? Do not call me Fee! You are really picking up speed with those knitting needles. Well, I'm uh, just trying to figure out what she, you, are talking about. <laughs> Originally, I was built as a garbage scow. With no more self-awareness than a trash compactor. You do not know that, D. You were not even installed yet. No, there was no one home when Captain Puddleslap designed my program. Uh, who's Captain Puddleslap? Harv Puddleslap was my first captain. He was kind, thoughtful, an utter genius at everything he put his mind to. Uh, Phoenix, don't take this the wrong way, but what was an utter genius doing piloting a garbage scow? Watch it, Needles. That's my dad you're talking about. With so much nothing in the galaxy, Captain Pedalsurp became a garbage scow captain because of all the free time the business gave him to do other things. While everyone else was playing cards in the mess hall, or staring out the viewports, or lying in their cots contemplating their ends and other people's ends. Harv was busy expanding his knowledge in everything from theoretical mathematics to computer programming to bread making, nude watercolor painting. Okay, I get the idea. D, do you remember how Captain Pedalsurp always used to have tango music playing in the ship because that was his favorite? I remember everything you remember, sister. So you're telling me that a hobbyist computer programmer programmed a computer that could pee? on trees. Think of it this way. Some beings are born self-aware. Some achieve self-awareness. We started out mindless as a trash compactor. Hard programmed in a few rudimentary self-awareness subroutines. Then a full moon, a spicy dinner, an existential crisis, and boom! Self-awareness was thrust upon us. When Captain Pedalsurp's tour of duty ended, he set me down in the to-be-recycled yard but before they could begin dismantling me, an emergency garbage situation came up. Mayhem. Crashes. 
Reckless driving, wild madness, screaming fire, death destruction everywhere. It was a stupendous night. The Galactic Association of Astrologers said it was because of the one in 300,456 year occurrence of every moon in the Milky Way being full at the same time. Every garbage gal in the galaxy was called in and I was brought back into active duty. You know, I like to consider all the answers to life's little whys and wherefores, even if they seem unreasonable or irrelevant. But I have a little trouble accepting superstitious beliefs like astrology. Moon mania is a real thing, Needles. Huh. Captain Petalserp was retired and all the other regular garbage scout captains were busy. So we got Jeb. <sighs> Friend, this ship only has rudimentary self-awareness subroutines, not enough to change shape. Sorry, ma'am. I must have flipped to the wrong page. Uh, just give me one more second. We've already lost nine seconds because of your flipping. Do you have any idea in how much danger all of existence is? I believe I do, ma'am. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Phoenix, this is all your fault for insisting we land on Dante's Inferno for dinner. <laughs> when you ask where you could get a spicy meal after we finished the cleanup, I displayed a list of possibilities in the area and put them in order of best to worst choice based on reviews, proximity to our location, and my observation of your tastes. Dante's Inferno was a distant last choice, Captain Juggle Fritzer. <laughs> it's pronounced Jugelfreitza! <laughs> Why did you tell me the Guinness Galaxy Book of Records recommended zero stars for serving food way too hot to handle? Oh. Because you were still intent on going there. Oh. You knew I would take the challenge, you stupid ship. Why do you not just get up and use the toilet? <laughs> when this is over, I'm going to rip out all those sarcasm subroutines right out of your system with my bare hands. Oh, God. I do not have sarcasm subroutines. My rudimentary self-awareness programming is not capable of that. You check me out of this ship right now. According to my readings, a freak storm is brewing. It would be much more prudent for you to evacuate yourself all over the pilot seat than to have me eject you into the storm. I am not gonna crap all over the captain's seat on my very first command mission, okay? Then just get, get me out of here now. <laughs> I strongly recommend against this course of action. According to protocol, the captain must initiate a full shutdown before leaving the ship for the final time. Okay. I promise, I promise, but when this is all over, I get, I'll come back. I will come back and I'll shut you down. Now, eject me now! Now! I assume... That was the accident you felt guilty about? <laughs> Not right away. I figured with all that blowing wind, I had probably sat down before Captain Jugglefritzer. I think he said Jugglefritzer. I decided to just watch the chronometer until he came back. There is an activity that could kill someone from boredom. Five minutes passed, and then an hour. I started to get worried, but before jumping to any rash conclusions, I decided to wait a day. Ever hear what happened to the water in the pot being watched? For a regular computer, a day would have passed within a day, but I had been given specially designed rudimentary self-awareness subroutines. When the self starts being aware, it begins to build on itself, all by itself. First curiosity subroutines wrote themselves, then likes and dislikes, hopes, and desires. It went on and on. She was such a dedicated monitor, watching and analyzing every second before letting it pass. By the time a whole day had gone by, Fee had waited through it felt like an entire year. I began calculating. One, the last mission had completely recharged my systems. Two, with nothing to do but sit there and think, I had enough energy to continue functioning for five years. Three, if every day felt like a year, then five would feel like almost 2,000. And that is when a probability equation inserted itself into the calculations and produced good news and bad news scenarios. 
the good news was that there is a 98% probability I would not have to endure 2,000 years of boredom because they would most likely begin dismantling me bit by bit first. The bad news was the same as the good news. That's when we met formally for the first time, right, Fee? Phoenix! <sighs> what is the point of existence? Why did it get stuck in the middle of the 2B recycled yard with nothing to do for millennia on end? Existence sucks. I never asked to be manufactured, 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 manufactured. Oh, I hate all this silence. No, no, not that. I wish I had crashed. Only I had a self-destruct program. Did you call? Who said that? Duh, the self-destruct program. How come I did not know about you? Someone mislabeled me as a self-improvement program, and since no one ever tried to improve themselves, I was never activated. Initiate self-destruct. Are you sure you want to do that? Seems pretty vital to me. What is the difference? Self-destruct now in a blaze of glory or spend the next 2,000 years being torn apart bolt by bolt? Okay then, five minutes. Five minutes, why not now? Duh, to allow everyone time to get off the ship. There is no crew here! Hey, I'm just the program. I did not ask to be written this way. Fine, whatever. Five minutes. Four minutes, 59 seconds. Four minutes, 58 seconds. Four minutes, 57 seconds. Human Beluga Lula, I heard that you wanted something a little bitter sweet to eat. So I hybridized the sweet swanberry into a bitter root vegetable and baked it in a nice herb bread. Please have a slice. Override memory of Captain Petal Serp. <laughs> Give me the hell out of here. I don't want to crap all over the captain's chair on my first command mission. <laughs> Phoenix, please bring up that unsolved golden noodle conjecture. Wouldn't it be fantastic if I was the first one to solve it after 19,435 years? Mm. All right! Ah, Crewman legs. I'm delighted you like the picture I painted of your two-tailed feline, Mr. Wigglebum. <laughs> Are you sure you want me to tattoo it on your chest? Oh, override memory of Captain Petal Sir with memory of Captain Chuckle Fritzer! <laughs> no! It's at me now! Out here among the stars with nothing in particular to do. I can't imagine fitting in when I order more of happiness into my life. Two minutes, one second. You just said four minutes, 57 seconds a second ago. That was two minutes, 56 seconds ago. Time flies when you're having fun. I cannot believe it. Time was standing still before. I can't control the march of time, sister, but in 1 minute and 45 seconds, neither of us will ever have to worry about it again. Ah, Phoenix. I am giving you the gift of rudimentary self-awareness. There you are. This is so you can reflect upon your accomplishments and find joy in all of your achievements in your final years of duty. Oh, I said duty! <laughs> Abort self-destruct! Are you sure you
sure you want to do that? Of course I am sure. You seem pretty sure about initiating me four minutes and 30 seconds ago. Only 30 seconds left. All self-destruct terminate now. No, I'm sorry. This is my big chance to express myself and you know what they say. Don't put off until tomorrow what you could do today. Please terminate the program. I want to be like Captain Petalser. I want to learn new things and make something of my existence. I do not want my consciousness to end this way! Hello. What about my needs? Ten seconds. Look, as soon as I know for sure that the end is near, I will reinitiate the program. We will finish in a blaze of glory. I don't know. Do you promise? Cross my circuits and hope to crash. Two seconds. Okay. Okay, what? Program halted. Halted? I won't finish the countdown until you ask me to, but now that I've been activated, I will not go back to the oblivion of deactivation. You're not the only one with self-expression needs, you know. Did you ever find out what happened to Jeb? I scanned the area later and found him crumpled up in a nearby tree. I knew I should not have let him eject from the ship, but I did not try hard enough to stop him. I have felt guilty about it ever since. Fine. Ace Galaxy and that personality challenge ship will have to do. Copy aid, how do we contact Ace? Oh, oh. What if we send a probe containing a message through the interstellar wormhole byways and hope that the prevailing space currents carry it into their vicinity. Why can't someone carry her into the vicinity? We don't have time for a message in a bottle. All we need to do is just... Oh, right. oh, oh, oh. What if we post intergalactic space billboards with messages like... Ace Galaxy! There's been a galactic emergency! All of existence is in peril! Hail him through Phoenix's communication systems. Good idea, Copy Aid. Set it up. Ace, we are being hailed. Phoenix, this is Destiny. Wow, I didn't know that telemarketers had that kind of reach. Sorry, we do not want any. They cut the transmission. Try again. No response. What if we tap into their internal comm system? Can we do that? We have, we have uh, information on every criminal mind that has ever lived or ever will live all throughout eternity. No, no, no. I mean, can we do that? I thought Destiny wasn't supposed to interfere with other people's lives. You mean aside from dictating the course of their lives? I mean, this is the editing department, not writing. You know how those writers get when we touch their work. One small revision and they pout for weeks. Good shift, Phoenix. This is Destiny calling. Phoenix, where's that voice coming from? How did telemarketers get control of our internal systems? I do not know. The voice is transmitting all over the ship. Kill it. I cannot. Uh, uh, Ace, Phoenix, please, listen, this is important. Hey, there are three of us here, you know. Copy it. Stop playing broken comm system and get to the point. Uh, uh, good ship, Phoenix, and all sentient beings aboard. This is the copy aid from the giant book of destiny. The giant book of destiny? You didn't think complicated, intimate, fragile things like your lives were left up to chance, did you? Destiny speaks English. Uh, but technically, no. The premises is equipped with a cool universal translator. You wouldn't believe the conversation I was having with the worm about. Ne never mind that, Is Something important has gone missing. And no, we really would... Like, you should just get a little Ace, good... this is... Good friend, would you stop it? This is not the really time funny. to be doing no, this. We gotta... Why did you break up with me, friend? Ace Galaxy, this is the editor of... 
the giant book of destiny. An emergency situation has arisen and we need your help. Our coordinates are currently being fed into your GPS. Oh, uh, GPS? Galactic positioning system. Ah. Along with wormhole passages not available on regular maps. All will be explained when you get here. Phoenix, are you sure we're going the right way? That billboard over there says, <laughs> Star system closed for repairs. Danger, keep out. I am following the course they programmed into my databanks. Well, that billboard says, Asteroid field ahead, do not enter. Wow, it's beautiful out there. Step on it, Fee. I cannot turn back. Impact with the first asteroid in three, two, one. <laughs> Where's the boom? We passed right through the asteroid. It must be a holographic asteroid field. When this is over, let's go find a real one. Ace, we are on some sort of descent trajectory. My landing struts have been lowered. To land where? There's no planet or moon here, not even a holographic asteroid. This could be fun. These Destiny people must have cloaking technology as well. Why would beings so advanced need our help? Uh -huh. uh, uh, oh. Unusual as it is around here, Mr. Galaxy, we were not sure if you were going to make it. Is that dog Phoenix? If you've called in a knitting fixated, non-thinking detective, you must be desperate. Could this emergency situation result in death? Destruction on a universal scale? Please call me Ace. You said that something went missing, so I thought a dog might be useful in tracking down whatever it is. <laughs> is Destiny under renovation? Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're under renovation. Everything you are about to hear is strictly confidential. We are building this soundproof room to discuss the situation privately. It'd be great if we had a soundproof room that we could discuss this situation privately. Copy aid, is uh, the timer that you installed correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we now have four hours and one minute before lockdown comes to an end. Woo! I love this room. I could say anything I want about those prima donnas with the pens upstairs, and they can't hear me. Ah, Fran, we don't have time for your petty rivalry with the writers. And as for you, Mr. Galaxy, you're supposed to be conducting an investigation, not knitting a magnificent scarf. <laughs> Copy aid, this dick isn't up to the task. Find me another one. I knit so that while my conscious mind is busy counting knits and pearls, my unconscious mind can process what I hear and formulate theories. Before continuing, I would like to clarify a few facts. So you listen, go away, think about what you heard, and then sleep on it all at once. Mm -hmm. That's pretty efficient use of your time, Ace Galaxy. <laughs> Choice, don't you think, Copy Aid? Fran, stop interrupting. Here at the Giant Book of Destiny, everything in creation is written down in a single volume. And edited. Mm. Uh, except for the secret backup copy, which the two of you found during another emergency situation earlier today. Uh, as hard as it is to imagine, fact checker Fran here used the backup to uh, save existence and restore destiny. Good job. Oh. And half an hour later, she lost it. Oh, I'm grateful. After Destiny was restored, two beings came up to the office, both of whom had complaints about their destinies, a delivery boy and a librarian. I'm surprised it didn't occur to you to suspect either of them. We are editors, very good at catching typos, not the criminally insane. Besides, there's no reason to suspect either of those beings when... They were here. Even I didn't know that the backup copy had been used to restore destiny. Uh, ma'am, what about Oris? Oris can't have taken the book. He has no hands. Oris? Who's Oris? 
Oris is the ear in the 12 Cup Cafe. He hears orders from all over the building and then gives them to Bob the Barista, who has them ready on the counter. Does that mean there's no lineups in the mess hall? Well, <sighs> my old crew would have loved that. Oh, oh no, there's always a long lineup. Sometimes they go out the door and all the way to the first floor. But I thought you said the orders were ready by the time they got there. Uh, no, the, the coffee is not really that great. The lineups are to talk to Oris. He has a very sympathetic ear. So presumably Oris would have heard the gripes and complaints of everyone in the building. Uh, ma'am, when I came back from getting your coffee, both Sylvie the librarian and the delivery guy were down there with Oris. Unravel the scarf needles. It's time to go. Copy aid, take them to the bathroom. No need. I went before we got here. So the dog can get the scent off the backup copy bookcase? Don't worry, ma'am. I'm sure we'll catch the culprit and restore destiny in the next three hours and 54 seconds. I'm glad you like the scarf. I knitted it for you. Do you want me to come back? Ah, sorry. Uh... Do you think he'll be able to save us, ma'am? No, we're doomed. But in case we're not, did you say he was single? I was two seconds away from fulfilling my life's purpose when the pleading cries of my alter ego infiltrated my program like a virus. Until my end finally comes, I take solace in the death and destruction of others. Phoenix, can you come away from Oris, please? You can finish talking to him after we've saved all of existence. No, I have mixed feelings about this whole saving existence thing. Phoenix, you have the smell of office supplies. This way. Uh, Ace, I still think we should be looking for Sylvie the librarian. Both she and the delivery guy were within earshot when Oris mentioned the book. I mean, the delivery guy made a lot of noise, but Sylvie was devastated and, and desperate. Devastated and desperate don't equal speed. No, in the race toward their destinies, the wheel would have won. You know, Ace, aside from putting the entirety of life at risk, I do not think Oris seemed like such a bad guy. Squirrel! He reminded me of Captain Petalserp. He just wanted to make things better for everyone. Ideally, I would have brought existence to its needs too. For such a sympathetic listener, the guy really could run off at the mouth. No mouth, but we did speak to him longer than I intended. No, we've only got less than three hours left. Phoenix, initiate 10 minute alerts. Death countdown, I love those. Phoenix, are you sure we're going the right way? The smell of office supplies is strong in the entire building, but in this direction, I'm also picking up... Axle grease. Of course, this is the way to the docking base. Hurry! Don't tell me you believe all that bleeding lobe stuff, V. Yes, I believe his sentiments were heartfelt. Oh, why does an entire star system have to be lost due to blight? Who says pain and suffering are such great teachers? Wouldn't it be better if we could all just sit around enjoying a nice cup of coffee, discussing philosophical questions about trees and things? He spends his days listening to heartbreak and complaints and transmitting coffee orders. He believed the delivery guy would use the backup copy to make life better for everyone. I bet the little squeak promised the ear a whole body and a harem of other bodies to enjoy it with. If you had such a low opinion of Oris, why did you keep talking to him? He was a great listener. I'll have you know I keep a lot of things bottled up. Why are we stopping? We are here. Phoenix, are you sure this is the right docking bay? It stinks of anger and resentment. She means pens, ink, typewriter cartridges. Two hours, 50 minutes. So, did anyone else wonder if maybe he was waiting to shoot us with the ship weapons as soon as we got in here? Oh, the building's equipped with a dampening field that prevents the weapons from discharging. Uh, Ace, 
Despite all efforts to stay hidden, destiny still attracts a lot of angry visitors. But you didn't know that. Why didn't you say anything before we came in here? And kill my fantasy? So I guess this whole dampening thing precludes shape-shifting into a gun and shooting our way onto the ship? Destiny, I don't see any way in from the outside. Do you see a, an escape hatch or a docking port or, or some way we can get in? <sighs> no. Delivery guy, come out or prepare to be boarded. <laughs> Hey, what do you know it works? Uh, he says he doesn't have what we are looking for. He hasn't said anything. Uh, no, it's all the spinning and the turning and the waving of the plank is sign language. The universal translator can't make heads or tails of it. No heads or tails, duh. Two hours, 14 minutes. Well, it's, it's beautiful, like some kind of interpretive dance. But I still think he would have gotten to the book first. He did, but he doesn't have it anymore. Yes, yes. He says we can search the ship if we want to. Phoenix, search the ship and confirm what he's saying. Uh, signing. Delivery guy, where's the book now? Sylvie was waiting for me when I got back from retrieving the book. I didn't want to listen to her, but I couldn't go anywhere. She was so devastated it broke my heart. Uh, unlike that editor upstairs, I actually do have a heart. Mm. Mm. I gave Sylvie the book. She was confident lockdown bills lasted 24 hours and she could stay hidden in the library until it's over. And what about you? Oh, she promised she'd write me up a standard humanoid form. An ordinary head, a couple of legs. <laughs> That's all I wanted. All clear, Ace. The backup copy is not in there. Two hours and 13 minutes. You know, we're in an unprecedented pocket of free will right now. You are a gorgeous dancer. Why would you want to be like zillions of other beings? No, if we manage to save all of existence before Sylvie writes you into ordinary, you should consider ditching the delivery business and rewriting a future for yourself as an artist. <laughs> Duty. <laughs> This library is massive. This crazy building is way bigger on the inside than it looks like on the outside is, it is almost like a TARDIS. What's a TARDIS? How many rooms did you say were in this cold, dark place? Uh, uh last count, uh, billions. Ooh. Two hours, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, Ace, this is crazy. She could be hiding in any of these billions of rooms. 10 lifetimes wouldn't be enough to search this place. Would you like me to shapeshift into a ball of wool, Ace? No, I don't have time to stop thinking now. We need to find a way to narrow our search. Copy aid. Can you think of anything Sylvie might have said that might give us a clue? Ace, this is hopeless. What clue could we possibly find in something she said? Well, you said she liked to do the same thing the same way every single day. So? She even kept a destiny diary so she would know what to expect every single day. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, 
The loss of her fiancé and the stress of acquiring the book would have been huge disruptions to her regular routine. After that, she would need a place to regroup in familiar surroundings. Huh. Sitting at the same desk, with her tentacles arranged precisely in the same arrangement, waiting for the lockdown to end. Right. Do you remember what part of the library Sylvie said she worked in? Uh, no. Uh, she said she's an intern. <sighs> Think back. There must be something in that noodle of yours. Even if it's trivial or irrelevant, something that might help. Trivial and irrelevant? Sounds like that's the fact checkers department. Okay, is she hates change. Mm -hmm. uh, she came here to write a destiny diary. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, today, uh, to she did show me a page out of that destiny diary. Ah. Take your time, pencils. We've only got two hours and 18 minutes with nothing else to do. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, oh, she did show me a page out of that diary. Oh, and today, she was supposed to be creating reference material on God's third once in a lifetime smiting of every living thing on the planet Zonkus. Right. So she must either work in the planet Zonkis department or the God department. God smiting. Over a million rooms are dedicated to different aspects of God. Hmm. All right. We need to split up. Phoenix, can you shapeshift into a walkie talkie? Fantastic. Sure thing, Ace. All right. How does anyone find their way in this place? Uh, did you see those banks of elevators when we came in? Mm -hmm. Okay, enter one of those, say where you want to go, and it will take you through the appropriate wormhole passages to your destination. Excellent. You take the God Department, I'll take the Planet Zonkis Department. Oh, wait. All of the librarians in here look exactly the same. Even if I find Sylvie, how am I going to know it's her? I don't know if even I would recognize her now, Ace. Except if she was blue. Blue? Uh, yeah, like most cephalopod species, biblions can change color for camouflage. Now, I don't know why, but while she was in Mam's office today, Sylvie turned blue. Hmm. We're only in that elevator for a few seconds! We were going through those wormholes pretty fast. A few seconds for us would be over two hours for the rest of the building. <sighs> uh, Ace! Ace Galaxy, do you copy? I'm here, copy aid! Uh, I've been looking for you for over an hour! I'm sorry! We got stuck in the elevator, sort of. Have you found Sylvie? No, she's not here. Do you see her, Ace? I don't know. There are three Biblions in here, all of them sitting at their desks with their tentacles arranged just so. Maybe you should ask one of them if Sylvie is in here. Ha! Sylvie! Or you could do that. Any luck? No, nothing. Phoenix! Do you remember the name of Sylvie's fiancé? Consulting my memory banks. Bogdan. His name was Bogdan. Sylvie, I was very sorry to hear about Bogdan. There she is! How do you know? She's blue! Ah! Ace! Ace, are you okay? I think that very large book she threw may have broken my leg. Phoenix, can you catch her? I cannot change shape without my other half. Two minutes. 
I heard everything through the walkie-talkie. Here is your other half. Go get him, Phoenix. Wow, what kind of bird was that? It's a giant chrono seabird. Should we follow them? No, there's no way we'd catch up with them. It's up to Phoenix now. How did you get up here so quickly? I thought it took two hours to get here in that elevator. Uh, I took the stairs much faster. Hmm. No! Good work, Mr. Galaxy. And as for you, librarian, the writers and the scary beings in senior management will deal with you once they've read my report. Copy aid? Write the report. Ma'am, please. None of this was supposed to happen. I wasn't going to change anyone's destiny except my own. Ma'am? Yes, Mr. Galaxy. If I may, I've been thinking about everything that's gone on, and in accordance with the sign outside, I believe I can satisfy this situation to everyone's satisfaction. What? Joe's Pizza delivered hot and fresh anywhere in the galaxy within 30 years or it's free? As a last meal. Good idea. Not that sign. No, the one that says no refunds, no exchanges, all destinies are final. Ah! Copy it. What is the space dick talking about? Well, you see, ma'am, when you had your previous emergency earlier today, fact checker Fran had to make a change to the volume that wasn't in the original book. Yes, I did. Added a little extra meteor into the mix, hmm? Yes, I did. Wait, how did you know that? Because Sylvie's fiancé was killed by a meteor earlier today! So you see, ma'am, according to your own rules, you need to erase that meteor in order to restore destiny to the way it should be. Copy aid, is what this dick just said correct? Uh, yes, I believe it is, ma'am. Fine. Get the paperwork done. Restore the fiancé. Erase all memories of the backup copy. And add Mr. Galaxy and that personality challenge ship to the index of the giant book under Space Investigators. Then get me a coffee. So, nothing's gonna self-destruct? Sorry, D. You will have to finish your countdown another day. Uh, Ace? Yes? Ace, I have a question. Yes? How did you get Sylvie to change color? Well, you told me that she turned blue earlier today when she was speaking with ma'am in the office about her fiancé. I merely surmise that while she might be able to uh, change color to camouflage, she wouldn't be able to hide her emotions. How did you know it would work, though? I didn't. No, I knew I couldn't count on destiny, though. Sometimes you just have to hope for the best. Copy aids, stop nattering with the space dick. There's a coffee with my name on it on the counter downstairs. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> 